computer. And it's recording. All right. What's <laughs> No, I just saw like my beard. I got to clear it up a little bit here. I saw doing cutting my beard. My skin just sits like a little shorter. Yeah, you did that yourself? Yeah. <laughs> But what's up, guys? It's your boy Steve on the NDO podcast. I got my brother with me, John Casababu. All right, he's a pro hooper. Last season played for the uh, Long Island Nets. All right, I also train him, trying to help him get to the next level, get that call up from them. And then, but yeah, we're gonna today. Well, first off, how you doing, bro? Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? As well as I can be right now, just uh, alive, safe, you know, uh, with the family. Uh, uh, nothing we can ask for. Exactly. Uh, no more we can ask for. Exactly. Good exactly. health, family, that's all that really matters, especially during this time. But um, it's funny, I just, hung, I mean, we just hung out, so you know you're doing all right. Um, but yeah, so like the reason why I'm bringing you on today, I want people to hear you, um, you know, hear your story, learn about you as, a, as an individual. You're more than just an athlete. You know, you got sick dance moves. I've seen them, you know, all that. You speak mad languages, all that stuff. So, but um, let's talk about um, your origin. Like, where are you from? You know, uh, you know, people would like to hear that. And then, you know, your journey um, through, through to getting to the States. And then we'll go, we'll go stop there. You know, I have a couple of questions and we'll take it from there. So let's, let's start from the origins, man. What's up? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was uh, originally born uh, born in the Congo, Kisangan to be precise. You know, uh, spent a little time uh, coming in and out of the country. Uh, you know, uh, as I don't know if people are really aware of what's going on. Uh, usually in my country, it was not very stable. By the time I was there, you know, it was a little war here and there. You know, and. Uh, my parents just finding a best, you know what I'm saying, the best uh, possible scenario for, you know what I'm saying, for the kid to go to school and do, you know what I'm saying, succeed in life or whatever. So uh, I ended up going to the capital for a little bit and I was young, I was growing pretty fast and uh, I was dragging a lot of attention and I was selected, uh, got a scholarship to go to Spain uh and my only condition the condition my, my dad had was uh, as long as i keep studying you know what i'm saying get my degree he didn't care about anything else so that, that was what was important for him to be for me to be safe and get a degree so that's why i started my long journey you know what i'm saying uh <laughs> my basketball journey i didn't even know how to play it all i knew i was big i was fast you know what i'm saying uh, and I was young, and that's all they wanted. But um, uh, once I moved to Spain, um, my host family who was supposed to host me for about, I don't know, about two to three months only. Uh, they ended up asking the school if I can stay with them. And today, they are my parents, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They raised me, they took care of me, you know. Uh, so I'm still with them today. And it's just like a blessed journey, uh, you know, saying God put in my path and everything. So it's it's just a blessing. So everything's really started in a Canterbury school uh, known as the Academy today. You know, uh, it's a very well-known uh, organization who develop players, you know, and put them to, to colleges or different high school. Uh, I went there, but then went to Real Madrid before I came here in the United States to West Down School and I finally graduated from Fairfield. And today I play for the Long Island Nets. And so, yeah, I guess you can see, you know, say cutting a little short, but it's been an unbelievable journey uh, so far. And I'm hoping that it's gonna keep, uh, it's gonna still stay interesting, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all my way to the end of it. Yeah, that, that's crazy. That's a lot of, it's a lot of traveling. First yeah. off, that's a lot of traveling. So um, now, now, just really quickly, let's, let's, I just want to backtrack. What was your experience like playing um, and being developed in Spain, you know, for 
you know, obviously you train with me, you train with a lot of other trainers. What was the, the training like growing up to develop your game? Because when I first met you, you were really, you were high skilled for coming in, you know, as a high school senior working out with, with the Fairfield Stags. Um, you know, what was that, what was that journey like? Uh, at the academy, uh, when I first got there, you know, uh, the coaches, uh, they have a specific mission is to, you know what I'm saying, to make the player be vers versatile. Don't matter uh, how tall, short, or you are, you have to be able to do everything. And we worked on that since day one. First, I got there. The first thing we started working on was my ball handling and my shooting, because my and my passing obviously. My coach say if you can't pass, you can't shoot, you can't uh, you can't dribble. We didn't do our jobs, you know. So that's that that was the dynamic uh, of the whole the whole process. So uh, that's why I say like the core the core of my basketball like journey. You know what I'm saying like. Uh, it was pretty good because I was surrounded by coaches who want to invest in the player and not just the wins, you know. They want to invest in the player, not just the image. And that right there, you know what I'm saying, it gave me the good start, you know, to be where I am today. So uh, we spent a lot of hours, you know what I'm saying, fixing my shot. We spent a lot of hours, you know, getting my hand off. Uh, you know, um, not as much. They didn't focus on the physical as much because they told me, Sam, you, you look, you know what I'm saying, you look strong since I was a kid, you know. I'm big. They said everything else is going to take care of itself as I'm growing. But uh, what was important at the time was, you know, my technique and uh, how am I shooting my wrist, how am I keeping my left hand, you know, how am I using my left hand and how am I reading the game. You know, put your head up, see the whole floor, you know. Uh, and at times, my coach would put me into practicing games at the point guard position, you know, and not being able to handle the ball correctly. He didn't care if we lost a game. He knew we ain't going to lose a game either, but he wanted me to, you know what I'm saying, to get that feel of the game, knowing, you know, what it feels like to be uh, a point guard. So he made me learn every single position, you know. So if he put me as a point guard, I knew exactly what I needed to do. If he put me as a shooting guard, a small forward, forward, center, he, he just, okay, I knew what else, whatever I needed to do. So I think that was important, you know what I'm saying, to kind of uh, mold my, my game to what I am today, uh, being versatile. All right, yeah, that's, you see, that's huge. And then and for me, I can go off a tangent on it, but I'm not going to about the development overseas is, is quite different than it is here which is why you have players overseas and they come here, they're very skilled and well-developed because yeah. that's what they were focused on, skill development, and then obviously the IQ aspect. All right. The one thing that I think America has over the, the world normally is usually the athleticism, but now everybody's starting to catch up. So now it's just kind of been a free-for-all. So, but and then transition to Real Madrid, they got a more fine-tuned John. So what it, what happened there in terms of your your development as a as a player and individual? Uh, obviously in Real Madrid, uh, you know it wasn't as focused as it was at the academy, uh, but uh, they they also had like similar interests. You know, uh, develop you, trying to boost you uh, up enough. You know, saying to trying to play with the first team. Uh, first year when I came in, there was that it was a different level. Obviously, they over, over there they focused also on your physical. You know, what I'm saying you had to to run just as fast because I had to play with all the guys. You know, I had to play with stronger guy, so they want to boost my physical, boost my stamina. You know, what I'm saying trying to get me to to you know to work at the at play at the same level. So. Uh, even though I was uh, I was skilled enough to play, you know what I'm saying, but I wasn't fit enough to play. So that's where that the whole thing changed. And I I think uh, the Real Madrid process is kind of also allowed me to gain speed. You know what I'm saying? Gain speed, uh, gain more strength. You know, and kind of transition from that all the to the you know, to the technique aspect, to the physical aspect and put them together, you know? So I think that's 
that's where I kind of molded it all together, you know, and you know, just taking another step forward. Uh, and also exposure in Real Madrid is different uh, compared to the academy. <laughs> it's Real Madrid, you know. So uh, it was completely different. And I was allowed to play with the first team. Uh, uh, and the preseason and stuff, you know, it was it was great. It was great. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, my journey just kind of took me to come to the United States. So, yeah, here I am. Yeah, here we are. So now let's go to, real quick. Just to, let's go to West Town, West Town, right? Mm. How was that experience? They're normally a powerhouse, um, you know, in the country, one of the top, um, you know, prep schools, always putting out a bunch of talent and, you know, have a bunch of former or current NBA players now. Um, you know, what was what was that like? Was it, you know, similar to um, the, the academies or was it a, a, you know, step up? You know, what, what was that like? Uh, I think West Ham was uh, kind of a preparation for the next, you know what I'm saying, the next step, which was college, you know. Uh, my coach uh, was very specific in what he, he could see, you know what I'm saying. He's very good at, like, look at you, kind of know what you need to work on uh, right away. So it prepared you to, uh, for that next step. And, you know, like, obviously with him, I didn't have as much time as the other guys did. Because it was a one year, you know, saying I came my senior year and I had to go to college uh, right away. But uh, the dynamic was different, you know, and um, uh, also kind of, I would say, you know, uh, it was kind of show you like it, it kind of prepare you for like, you know, like that that whole idea of trying to accept the role, you know, uh, like. Uh, in colleges and pro life, you know, you're not always allowed to do everything, you know, like accept the role, you know, uh, being comfortable with it, you know what I'm saying, be given a role and being able to play to the best of your ability, you know. And he asked me, he asked me this question, what do you do best? Okay, <laughs> what do you do best? I didn't know how to answer that question uh, then, you know. Uh, but he helped me realize, uh, like, there, even though I'm a versatile player, there are certain things that I, I know I do, you know what I'm saying, that I can always bring no matter what, you know what I'm saying, no matter what, how, you know, how bad my offensive game is, offensive, I know I can always bring that, you know what I'm saying, that nucleus into the, uh, into the game. I can always bring that, you know what I'm saying, to trying to help the team win. So uh, I think that transition kind of helped me under understand that part even he was short a short time, but it also, you know, uh, I had a great coach. And, you know, he cared deeply about the person, you know what I'm saying? Uh, more, he cared more about the person than the game. So he kind of taught, uh, teach you. Uh, it's still due to this, it's still due to this day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I call him every time I make a big decision, is always there, you know? So I think that transition was uh, important, even though short, it was really important for me to go to college. Huge. That's huge. Now, from there, right, now I know, obviously, I know the story with, with how you got to Fairfield. And, um, you know, so what? Uh, how was your experience um, at Fairfield? Um, you know, and, you know, you, I, obviously I can speak on my behalf in terms of watching you develop when I first met you to where you mm -hmm. are now, obviously through your four years. But um, you know, what was you know, what was special at Fairfield? What what how did it what was did it how did it help you prepare, you know, for this next the next steps and and you know, why Fairfield? Uh there is a mix a lot of mixed feelings about Fairfield, you know. Uh <laughs> yeah, um I first thing that actually made me choose Fairfield was the fact that it was my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I came in on my visit. Uh, I had one of the craziest visits, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, and that visit, obviously, like, it's meant to make you feel special. But it wasn't that that made me commit. The fact that I, I just connected with, the, with everybody in the team felt like I known these guys, you know what I'm saying, for a long time. But I just met them for one day. And that feeling, you know what I'm saying, you can't, 
you can't find it to a lot of places. So I was like, you know what? I want to ride and die for these guys. You feel me? And I was ready to put my body on the line for that. And so if I was ready to do that and I felt like they were ready to do the same, I was like, this is where I belong. You know, so that's kind of how the whole process for me choosing Fairfield came, came through. Uh, obviously, freshman year, you know, we had, we had a great team. Uh, you know, we had a really good team. Uh, uh, arguably, but, to be honest, arguably that freshman team might have been, besides my freshman year, your, that team and my freshman year team was probably the most uh, talented teams of the decade. Um, to be quite honest with you, it's a lot. It was a lot of talent on that team. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you're absolutely right. The, there was a lot of talent on that team. The freshman class that was coming in was hot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was hot, but uh, uh, we came up short that year. You know, and uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't blame it on the coaches. You can't blame it. You know what I'm saying? On uh, your teammates and everything. At the end of the day, we came up short. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, it don't matter. You can only blame yourself. You feel me? Uh, I just wish that back then, uh, you know, I studied the game better. You know, I studied the game better. I studied myself better. Uh, and uh, I wish I had you, <laughs> you know, back then uh, to work out to kind of, you know, get on that field. And I wish to, you know, like uh, that was being more utilized, you know what I'm saying, to to play, like, to use my type of, like, my strength more than, you know what I'm saying, just the certain stuff. But uh, but I, I will tell you that I, I did uh, recognize my my progress, although I felt, uh, my freshman year, I felt like it declined a little bit, you know, and then uh, kind of started rising back up the following year, but uh, I did, I did recognize uh, that progress, you know, uh, to prepare me for the next step. I worked a lot with Coach Wheeler, Tyson Wheeler, you know, and uh, uh, we kind of, you know, yeah, kind of break down the game, like realizing like, you know, what I needed to do and what I need to focus on. So uh, coming to the pro, you know, you always tell me like, yo, you got to finish. You got you to gotta get your finishes. You can't be missing layups in there. You know, when you miss shooting shot, you got to make them, you know, because <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to keep passing you the ball if you're not making shot. So uh, he was right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, uh, the hope uh, for me, the college transition just kind of made me mature a lot, you know, uh, a lot and becoming a better leader uh becoming a better leader becoming a better teammate you know what i'm saying and not complaining focusing on what i have to do playing my role and understanding that just because uh, this is my role in the team that i can't do more than that you know what i'm saying but i like understanding that there's one thing that i have to bring every night and that's what it's you know what i'm saying that's why a team is gonna be i'm gonna be paid for and obviously, I bring in the extra is always the plus that's going to give you the extra check. Yeah. But, but uh, it's important to know, you know what I'm saying, to know your role, to know your strength. And I've matured a lot uh, in those terms. And I think that did help me a lot uh, uh, in my, like, my early professional career. Yeah, I can speak on that because... Obviously, I was there to, during that process and learning about it. And, um, yeah, no, that, I mean, like, I think, like, watching you grow from where you were to where you are now, you know, it's night and day. And, you know, because of that, I think it's made it, – I mean, you've always had that in you, but it, like you said, it helped mold you um, into that person, that, 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 that general spirit who you are and what you bring to the table every day, which why is why it led you to – what you were able to do, I think, in my opinion, this past year. And, um, you know, we've had our talks, but now let's um, transition to your decision. You know, so you graduate. Um, pretty sure you got a thousand points, correct? Mm -hmm. um, plus, you know, mad rebounds, 
defensive player of the year, your senior year, or all the def- defensive team, um, just like a bunch of accolades get invited. So we, we reconnect at the uh, three-on-three tournament up in Minnesota last – was it last – yeah, last year. No, two years ago. Damn. Oh, it was last year, right? I can't remember yeah. what it was. It was yeah. whenever the before Corona hit when we had we we had an NCAA tournament, um, in in Minneapolis. It was, it was dope. It was really dope. Mm. Um, you know, I got to see him play. But then you know, talking to him, he was he want we wanted to get back into training because he's figuring out his next steps. So let's let's really just brief briefly talk about that. You know, I want to put this out there for you know players. Um, you know, I didn't really. I've talked to Derek. I've talked to Marcus. I was a bunch of old Fairfield heads, but I don't think I brought up the question about, I did bring about the agents a little bit, but what kind of determined your path? You know, what did you, why did you choose one instead of the other? Mm. Why did I choose one to stay here? In terms of, yeah, instead of going or playing overseas or, you know, pursuing the NBA what what went into that decision for you? Uh, for me, uh, the whole like aging process. Uh, first of all, you had to, you know, they, the a lot of agents. They, you know, what I'm saying they, they sharks. <laughs> okay, let's put it that way. Is what they call it. What it is, they sharks. You know, they're trying to get. You know, what I'm saying they're trying to get signed players. They see an opportunity. They're trying to get it. But uh, there was never like um, a stupid question to ask, you know. Uh, you have to be able to connect with your agent. You have to be able to know that it's gonna work for you, you know. And uh, uh, that you also everything you do, you take a risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you might choose, you might make a bad decision, but at the end of the day, you just gotta go with it, you know. And you can always rectify that, but you gotta go with it. So I went with my guts with who I signed. And uh, I felt like that person was the right one for me. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not always the right one for everybody, but it was the right one for me. And uh, uh, regarding to the whole decision of pursuing the G League and trying to make the big step, uh, obviously I had offered offers overseas. Uh, I did and, uh, when I first came out. And like, obviously the money as a rookie, you know what I'm saying? The money is not always great. You know, and uh, and I was like, like, yo, you should, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people were on your ears. You should do this. Staying here is a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? The G League sucks. You know, where I heard a lot of negative and positive about the G League, you know. Uh, me and my agent talked about it, and he thought that uh, I should I should take a, a year in the G League because he, he thinks, uh, you know what I'm saying? He thought that I could make my dream come true. So, uh the way I see it, man, the way I see it is, you know, we make a lot of decisions every day. You feel me? So uh, going overseas, you know what I'm saying? People, they like, everybody choose their path, you know? And uh, I know that I've dreamed of being in the NBA for so long, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I'm going to make it. I didn't even know I was going to make it to the G League. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm going to make it. But I know I'm going to try hard, you know? And if I don't try, I will ever, I will never know, you know? And uh, uh, that's why also the whole degree comes in. You feel me? I have a degree. I know I have a backup plan, you know? So uh, as much as I love basketball, it all is going to end one day. You feel me? So um, I do have a, a short, you know what I'm saying, short life plan. And I, I, for two years, I want to give it my best to try to make it to the next level. If that doesn't happen, I can always go overseas, you know. And obviously, I, uh, this year I received really good offers, but with the whole corona thing, you know, it couldn't work out. But uh, for me, I follow my instincts, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I follow my dream. Yeah, a lot of people didn't feel great about it, but it ain't about a lot of people. At the end of the day, behind closed door, it's me, <laughs> me, you know what I'm saying, and me, just looking at the mirror, you know what I'm saying? So the decision was mine, and I want to pursue my dream, and regardless of the outcome.
So, and that's how I see it. You see, and that's, that's huge that you had that insight for yourself because a lot of people in your situation would maybe have listened to, you know, certain people in their corner. Obviously, you reach out to people, they get advice, but yeah. at the end of the day, you were able to realize, look, this is, I've, I've talked to who I need to, but it's my decision at the end of the day. And I feel like this is about me. This is what I want to do. This is my dream. This is my life. And I want to do give everything I have to make this a possibility for myself because I want this. So I think that's like very, very mature, very, very um, insightful for you that you did that. So um, obviously I hope people listen to this whole interview, um, obviously get to this part and just listen to, to that. I always speak on the podcast about, you know, positivity, um, thoughts to provoke in terms of, you know, chasing what you want, what you want to do. Cause at the end of the day, it's your life. You got to do what makes you happy. And, um, you know, and I, 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 and I believe you, I'm, I'm behind you hundred percent. Like I want you, I want to help you get to that point. So that's, that's my thing. And like, I'll feel fulfilled if I'm able to help either if, even if you don't get it, which I think you will get it. That's my thought process. But even if you don't, like, I know I did everything that I could to help you on your journey to get to where you need to go. You right. know, that's what, for me as a trainer, that's what it's about. And that's why, like with you, I just think that with the season that you had, I, we, we talked about this, just like we have, a, there was a lot of good momentum going. And so hopefully when some sort of normalcy, the G league, hopefully they'll talk about doing something, you know, this coming year, um, that way you can get your opportunity to, to play again, that we can, that you can show, showcase what you, you, you're capable of. Um, you know, there's a lot of changes. I don't know. Are you going back to the same team with, with, with or, or is still in negotiations? What's, uh, I'm going to keep it there in the blind because, uh, you know, I can't, I can't really talk about this, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. obviously, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just looking forward, you know what I'm saying, to another opportunity uh, to make it happen there. That's all I can say. <laughs> that's all, I, need, that's all, that's all I can say. That's all we need to hear. That's all we need yeah. to hear. Um, now, really quickly, dream team that you'd be able to, to play for, What's, what, would, what would that be? If you, had, if you had one selection of any team in the league, I know this is wild, but like, if you had the opportunity to, like, if you were, you're like my player 2K and like, you could choose whatever, you know, what, what would your, what would you do? You see, in my position, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. All right. Let's, 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 not, let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not get there. Let's not get there. All yeah. right. How about this? How, okay, I'm going to ask a couple of fun questions. Let's get, let's do that. Let's get, ask, so yeah. give us three interesting things about you. Three interesting things that people don't know. Three, three interesting thing. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm able to speak five languages. Really looking forward to learning at least three more. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, Absolutely, I'm crazy about dancing. I love, I love the, you know what I'm saying, uh, dancing and cultures in general, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that it's just music and dancing, you just connect cultures in a way that, you know what I'm saying, it's, you know, you can't really explain it with words. And uh, I think for me, my biggest thing, the, I think, uh, I, I believe that basketball is not my calling. I believe that helping people is. And I think that's one of the biggest thing. I think at least I hope that's one, one of the most interesting thing about me because uh, as I grow old, that's what I want to spend, you know what I'm saying? I want to work on, on helping people as much as I possibly can. And I like that because I'm at that stage and I didn't get to, I didn't recognize that until like probably last year. So I was 20, yeah, I'm 28 now, almost 29. So about, yeah, I was about 28, 27 ish. And I didn't figure that out because that's what I, I know I'm good at, even though I, I picked up on science during my journey. But I think that my calling is to 
help people through through anything, anything, you know, mental stuff or even the one thing that I'm doing right now, obviously, is with basketball. But, you know, it's just it's bigger than that. It's like living life, making sure you're happy and, you know, people that you care about, their, their health and safety with them. And sure. you know, I think just in perpetuity in terms of just everything, you know, that that leads to a more fulfilling life, you know, doing sure. that, you know, there's not as many with there, there's more people I'm not saying like we're perfect but like more people who have the thought process and the capacity of us that love to help others you know the world obviously would be a in a, a much you know different place and a better place um but yeah so all right how about this your favorite food because i know i know you cook what's your favorite <laughs> dish to cook my favorite dish to cook huh uh, oh man, you put me on the spot right here. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna break it now. My favorite dish to cook uh, lately. I ain't gonna lie. I, I kind of liked really uh, trying like shrimp. You know what I'm saying? Uh, making shrimp, putting a little uh, touch of uh, lemon. You know what I'm saying? Salt and like uh, hot pepper. And then, you know what I'm saying, while mixing it, while you, you, uh, you're mixing it a little bit so that you don't feel the hot pepper a little bit more like inside the shrimp. And then you get pasta and pesto. Pretty good. All right, Pretty John. Good. John's going to start a, a, a cooking channel too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got the Congolese and the Spanish background. Nothing can go wrong. Man, he's got the he's got the culture, <laughs> you guys, and he's gonna speak different languages. It's he's going worldwide with this. <laughs> um, I guess, and then you know, last last thing, what's your favorite activity to do outside? I mean, I mean, you kind of answered that already, but let's what? say favorite activity to do outside of basketball and dancing. Uh, hey, you favorite probably- activity, I, you know, what I'm saying, I, I think the one of the the best thing to do in this world is invest in people, you know? And uh, I love, you know what I'm saying? People, it might be a strange thing to do, but you know, like I, I like talking to people, you know what I'm saying? Like obviously not on the phone as much, but in person, you know, uh, having behind, you know what I'm saying? Behind closed door conversation about culture, you know, and everything that's happening with the country, you know? Uh, trying to change as many minds as I possibly can while also listening to other people because I think that's very important because a real true conversation happens behind closed door. You know what I'm saying? I realize that because uh, people, it's true that a lot of people are misinformed. A lot of people are uh, not, they're not educated. And, uh, you know, you can choose to, to just, you know what I'm saying, look at that, stand by, you know what I'm saying, not doing much, or you can choose to be part of something that's bigger than yourself. And sometimes listening to other people, understanding where they're coming from, you know what I'm saying, um, then you can somehow meet them in the middle and you guys can come to a better understanding and a path to work, you know what I'm saying, walk forward. Uh, and I think that's important because you don't know what people go through. You know what I'm saying? Every day you have no idea, you know, and I think it's important to, you know, uh, talk to people and listen to what other people have to say. And I think that uh, doing that is and nothing wrong with it, you know, and nothing wrong with it. Sometimes people are like, what are you talking to me? You know what I'm saying? But uh, I love, I love, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I love having conversation with people, conversation that are meaning, meaningful, conversation that are silly, <laughs> you know, conversation that, uh, you know, that has nothing to do with, with me per se, it don't matter, but uh, it's important to connect with people. I think that's a word. I like connecting with people. That's huge. And that's the, that's the thing too. It's just like, it's very, it's very, um, yeah, that, that is different because it's, for me, I agree to an extent. I just, I gotta, you gotta just, I, I, I just know there's people out there and just try to, 
you know, stay clear of them. You know, we call them the energy suckers, energy vampires and, and mm. things like that. Because, you know, I just, it's hard to always be, always be positive, but you also always want to very be, true. You know, but you also want to be around people that, like you said, will open your mind, which then can lead to you being that more creative about something or that more intuitive about something or that leads you to have this an, an idea that leads to you opening a business. You know, you just, like you said, when you invest in people, a lot of things can happen for you, you know? So I, I really, I really do like that. So, but like I said, I'm like 50, 50, like I do, I put myself out there a lot. And then when I interact with some, I can get a vibe off of it. it's like, I'm trying to help, but if you're not willing to help, yourself i can't keep forcing this for you and exactly uh you know like i agree with you but this is the way i see it you know what i'm saying uh if i i'm being good to you for me it's an investment and i'm hoping you you do what you got at the end of the day people will do what they do you know what i'm saying that is should that shouldn't be you know that shouldn't weigh heavy on us because we all make our decision like i was saying early you know but at the end of the day we we are who we are behind closed door. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I invest my time into somebody and this person chooses not to utilize that, that's their problem. It's not mine. You know what I'm saying? Before God, I know I did, you know what I'm saying? I did right by this person, you know? So uh, we can't let, you know, like uh, the energy or, you know what I'm saying? Like other people who are being negative or teaching negativity or, you know what I'm saying, or dragging other people down, be the source, you know what I'm saying, of, uh, you know what I'm saying, of, be that source of, how can I put it, you know what I'm saying, that, 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 that instrument is dragging people down, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, even if, uh, like, you can't allow people to suck up your energy, so just be the light, you know what I'm saying, where there is darkness, you know, and people who are seen and want to grasp through it, they will. And those who don't, you know, sometimes you have to let people make their choices. For sure. That's a big fact. It's a big, big fact. Yes, sir. All right. Last question. And then I'm going to let you go back about you. All right. All right. If you were talking to your younger self, Mm. what is one advice you would give to him uh, about life or basketball, whatever you want it to be, any sort of advice, looking back on what's taking place now, what would you tell your younger self to, to do to make yourself? You know? uh, what I would tell my younger self to do will, will be definitely to have more trust in myself, believe in myself. Because I've had that very young, you know, and I pushed myself to, but I wish you know what I'm saying, that I have that trust and sense of security that I can do, you know what I'm saying, more when people told me, told me I couldn't. Because there were moments in which I hesitated to pull me back, you know, instead of making that big jump forward. And I would touch myself in the heart and be like, you got to believe in yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are the one who should believe in yourself. And then the sky's the limit, baby. So uh, that's the one thing I'll tell, I'll tell myself. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to die. Believe in yourself. Do what's right. Always. There you go. I like that. That's a good one. So for our younger audience, or even anybody who's listening, who's, you know, who thinks about this stuff, like that's very important. That's a very important point. Just to be able to trust yourself, believe in yourself, no matter what, because you're the one who's living the life. No one's living your life for you. You you see something, you got to go for it. You got to go get it. So, but hey, bro, thank you for for taking this time to talk to me. Absolutely, bro. Um, go up on the the NDO podcast. Obviously, um, check us out: Apple Podcast, Spotify, SoundCloud is going up on SoundCloud. Um, it's going to be on YouTube if you guys want to watch. If you don't even watch it, you can listen to it on YouTube as well. Um, lastly, um, love would love to support if you guys have a. Uh, if you guys are looking for a plant-based protein I'm a brand ambassador for Orgain, um, use the tr- training co- uh, the code NDO Training Steve for thirty percent off your first purchase. Um, also, would love you guys to leave a comment or 
um, you know, a review about the podcast will help me um, help the brand, you know, get us out there more so more people can hear great conversations like this, as well as just, you know, being mentally aware of, of, of yourself and, and things like that. So I'm um, going to get back to talking more basketball with people. I need to get more basketball minds on the podcast just to talk. Um, so, but like I said, John, thanks very again. Derry, thanks again sure. for talking. And then um, guys, tune in, keep grinding, stay safe, y'all. Stay blessed and keep grinding. No days off. Yes, sir. No days off, I've been. <laughs>